cooking ดีว่า A Novel About a Thai Girl with the Passion for Thai Cooking written by พันวดีพงรดาเคอิทิเมคิน Episode 26 You are such a fool That night Midi and her mother slept in the same room Midi had told her mother that c h a r t i s h a t had proposed to her. It made her think and carefully assess what had happened. Kandi had noticed that Midi had never had any boyfriends. a m n o y had given up on her daughter and got engaged with Galaya. She knew that Midi was happy for them. He is a good gentleman with status and wealth. If he gives up his pride to tell you that he loves you and wants to marry you, you should consider. You are just a poor girl and really a nobody. You have nothing to lose. If you love him, just say yes. What about my dream? My life is good now. I have you, our family, and my restaurant. I don't want to shape my life. If it is for the better, you should. Don't worry about us or anything. Nan Bun and his fiance can run the restaurant for you. It is not as easy as you just say, Mom. You are afraid that he would look down on you and look down on us as well. No, it's not that. You are worried about little Bill, right? Yes, I have to tell him the truth. He really loves you for who you are. Do you love him or not? I. I love him. Then say yes to him. I will not ask for any dowry at all. All I ask is for him to love you and take very good care of you, make you happy forever. That's all. Midi did not say anything more. She turned away and kept thinking about her life until the dawn came. The sun shone softly that morning. c h a t i s h a t drove to Midi's house. The two went walking in the vegetable garden behind her house. I'm here to hear from you. Will you marry me? He had kneeled down on the ground to beg her. He held her hand in his. Midi thought it was the last chance for her. If she said no to him, a perfect gentleman with it all pride like him would be gone forever, gone with the wind, just like that, and there would never be tomorrow for her. I will marry you, Midi. I love you. Thank you. Thank you very much. He kissed her hand gently. We will get married as soon as possible. He did not kiss her on her lips like lovers did in a romance movie. Nothing had happened like that at all. I would like to meet your parents. He had followed her to meet her parents in the house. Bunmi was weaving a bamboo basket, while Kamdi was sewing new clothes. They pretended not to notice Midi and c h a t i s h a t coming in, even though earlier they had been quietly following them. Midi said to them softly, "Dad, Mom, my boss has something to tell you." Both of them looked at the gentleman in front of them. We are going to get married. We will have a wedding ceremony here. Are you sure you want to marry my daughter? Yes.
Often, there is something I want to tell you. Mom, I have to tell him the truth. Shadisha could hardly breathe. He was so nervous about what he was going to hear, whether it would be good or bad news. He thought that he would just have to accept it. I have two daughters. They look very much alike. Mihi's older sister had passed away many years ago. She left her little daughter to Midi. Midi had raised the girl like her own daughter. Her brother-in-law had asked her to go to stay in Paris so she would be close to her niece and had a chance to work in a Thai restaurant too. We are very poor, you know. Is that it? So, Midi has never been married? He then turned to look at Midi. She nodded her head to admit it. Chadisha really wanted to give her a punishment for what she had done, letting him misunderstand the whole thing. In front of her parents, while announcing a marriage plan, however, it would just be inappropriate. Midi should be free to live her own life and fulfill her dreams. That is why she decided to come home and open a small restaurant. He felt relieved. If you two want to get married, I will arrange the wedding ceremony here. Shadija was speechless. Mrs. Kamdi turned to ask her daughter, take Shadija upstairs to freshen up. We will be up soon. Be sure to stay for lunch. We are going to have lunch together. Yes. Midi and Shadija were resting on the deck of the traditional Thai house. She then gave him a bowl of water from an earthen jar nearby. He sat down on the floor with his leg crossed, deciding what to do with the water. It is green. He raised the bowl and drank up all the water. It was very really refreshing. Wait here. I will set up the lunch plates for us. Lunch is ready. She then went to the cabinet in a small kitchen. She took the lunch out and brought it to the deck. Shadisha had looked at all the Isan food in front of him. He turned pale. Bunmi and Kamdi came to join them. Everyone enjoyed eating except Shadisha. He ate only chicken and sticky rice. Mom, bought large fried grasshoppers from the fresh market. Do you want to try? Midi asked him. He tried to please her by taking one fried grasshopper from the plate, but he couldn't bring himself to eat it. You don't have to eat it. Give it to me. Bunmi said, stick with the chicken and sticky rice. Kamdi gave fried chicken to Shai Tishar. She looked at her son-in-law to be with delight. She could not believe that her daughter would be lucky in love. Maybe he would get married with the most perfect gentleman in the world. Kim Dong tradition was a right of asking for the hand of a woman, engagement and marriage all together. In Northeastern dialect means becoming relatives. It is a tradition of love between a man and a woman who want to be husband and wife. The tradition began, began with the man staying with the woman in her house together at night. 
They would get to talk and get acquainted. But while they were doing that, the girl had to keep doing some handicraft works, weaving as an example. When they decided they were in love and wanted to get married, they would follow the right of asking for the hand of a woman. They call it asking for a wife. A man would ask a senior relative to be his liaison. They would come to the woman's house with jar sticks, candles, and a flower bouquet as tokens to ask the parents for their daughter's hand. Grandmother had prepared a dowry that's called Kadon for the parents of the bride. On the wedding day, everyone dressed in Thai silk. Grandmother, Chai Tichar, Danutorn, Prapimara, Jamnian, and Mamio all joined the ceremony at the bride's house. After the groom gave a dowry to the bride, it would be time for a tradition of Su Kwan Teng Nan. A local Brahm would pray for the bride and the groom. Then he would give a broad egg to both of them to share. Half each. After that, he would tie each of their hands with a white cotton string and give them a blessing. All relatives and guests, including Amnoi and his fiancée Kalaya, would then tie each hand of the bride and the groom with the white spring and gave them the blessing too. The wedding ceremony started early in the morning and finished at night. That night, the groom had to stay with the bride. Shadishad was not used to the place. He could not go to sleep in the narrow room with no AC, so Midi had to keep him cool by waving a fan for him all night long. Three days after the wedding, they went to pay respect or wise ma to all relatives of Midi in the village. They would give them blessing and money or gifts too. Many years later, on the 85th birthday party of Grandmother Yisun, everyone in the Washira family had gathered in the Kunchai kitchen restaurant. The restaurant was decorated with various kinds of orchids. It was beautiful and very refreshing. Midi in a white maternity dress was cooking in the modern kitchen. She was promoted by her husband to be the chef of the restaurant. As Jamnian had retired and she had become grandmother's shadow, they went everywhere together. She also had an assistant chef who helped her in the kitchen. She had more time to accompany her husband to wherever he wanted to go. My Cinderella is in the kitchen. Everyone is waiting for you. I'm making shrimp spring roll for children. It is almost done now. Midi had wrapped all the shrimp spring rolls by herself, but let her assistant chef fry them for her. When the shrimp spring rolls were done, Midi cleaned her hands at the sink. After then, her husband dried her hands with a towel. He encircled her waist and led her out of the kitchen. Mom, mom, mom. A three-year-old boy and a two-year-old girl ran into Midi's arms. She would like to hold them, but her husband had forbidden her. You are pregnant. Let me. He held his son and his daughter in his arms and looked at them adorably. Come sit with me. Are you tired? Grandmother Yisu called. Midi went to sit beside her. Her husband and children sat next to her. I'm fine. Have you eaten anything? I taste your yam yai. It was as good as always. You are still a great chef, even though accompanying your husband has taken away 
a lot of your time. They are like Siamese twins. Then Ruthorn sat with his wife, Prabhimara, and their two twin girls. But we are as well, aren't we? Prabhimara smiled and continued feeding her daughters. When will you have the baby, Midi? Danuthorn asked. In around three months. We will be even. I will have to speed up. It will be hard, though. You have one in the beginning of the year and another on the way at the end of the same year. Hey, hey, hey. Chai Dishan interrupted. It was grandmother's wish that we gave her many heirs, so we must obey. Is that right? He turned to smile at his wife. She slapped him on his shoulder. The Ruthorn acted fearful to his wife. Everyone was laughing. Grandmother placed her right hand to touch her heart. She wished she could tell Lutjan how much happiness her heart had given her. Grandmother was so fortunate for the chance to have this much joy. She smiled. Everyone smiled. Grandmother always knew that her kitchen was the kitchen of love forever. The end.